Welcome everybody, it's Ted Padromo, and today we're going to be talking about Leadsology, the Science of Being in Demand, and I just love that title. And I was interviewed by Tom Poland, gosh, it was last month already, and we just kind of struck up a great friendship here, and we decided to interview each other for each other's shows. So, Tom's a 59-year-old marketing mentor. He started his first business at age 24. He started and sold four others, taking two of them international. Pretty impressive. At the time, he's managed teams over 100 people, annual revenue over 20 million. So today, Tom's big thing is Leadsology, the science of being in demand, which he's going to share with us today. And it's a blended learning program that gives professional advisors a model for generating a flow of high-quality inbound new client inquiries to their business almost every week of the year. We all want that as business owners. So welcome, Tom. Thanks, Ted. Great to be here. So. How did you come across this leadsology and what? Well, it was, it was actually born out of frustration and disappointment and, and, you know, probably a bunch of people can relate to this. So, so when I, when I started a, a business back way back in, wow, uh, 2005, um, I, I, I knew I needed to really sort out the marketing, the lead generation. And it was, a, it was a three year develop, business development program for business owners. So I, you know, bought every book on marketing and flew around the world and sat at the feet of the masters and came back and diligently implemented everything. And, and to my great disappointment, nothing done will work. At least nothing significant happened. Uh, and so Leadsology was born out of a heck of a lot of trialing and testing and measuring and finding out what actually works because a whole bunch of the marketing out there was for business owners and I had a service-based business, you know, I was offering professional advice, education, training. So what I wanted to do was come up with a model that worked for us guys sort of thing. You know, those of us who were not selling something tangible, we didn't have a retail shop or a manufacturing outlet. Uh, we weren't multi-level marketers. We didn't have real estate. Uh, we didn't uh, offer meals and restaurants. We were essentially marketing the invisible and that's how Leadology came about because I figured out that, yeah, there was, there was a bunch of things that were very specific about marketing the invisible. Uh, and if you didn't get those things right, it just ended in tears. So that's, that's the origins of Leadsology. Cool. Okay. If I share your screen, we can jump right into your presentation if you want. And yeah. Okay. Questions well, I, uh, along the way. I did a share screen, uh, but I will stop my video as well. Just, uh, just to preserve a little bandwidth. Yeah, Let me just see if I can stop the video. Okay. There we go. We all, we all, we now all know how incredible my hair is. <laughs> what time is it there? Eight in the morning? Yeah, we've just gone 8 a.m. Uh, tomorrow for, for most of you. So 8 a.m. On, on Thursday. Um, how's that screen share looking? Um, I'm not seeing it. Let's see. Oh, I got to stop sharing mine. Okay. Okay, try it now. Okay, I, I have started sharing. Uh, as soon as I do that, of course, all the controls disappear. Let me see if I can get them back. No, it doesn't look like it. Is, is that there we go. I see it now. Okay. So can you, uh, what, what we're going to do, is just so that I don't leave people behind when I'm talking, is I'm just, I just need to know, I'm going to change my screen. I need to know when you're seeing the change. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. So. We should flick through. Taking a while, huh? No, it looks good. But has the screen changed? Yeah. It's back to the title slide. Uh, it was on okay. a different slide. There we go. It changed. So now, what are you seeing right now? Agenda. Cool. Excellent. So we are in sync. Let me just go back to the agenda. Um, so, folks, what we'll do, and, and I do welcome questions at any time. I won't be able to see them come in during the presentation, but uh, Ted, you feel free, please, to interrupt me at any time if you're seeing questions. And of course, I'm happy to take them to the Q and A. So, the the primary purpose of the presentation is to introduce you to the Leadsology model, and in doing so, give you some strategies and principles, and indeed tactics that you can go and implement to start generating leads. Um, the secondary purpose is if those of you who have an interest in figure, uh, wanting a hand to implement Leadology, then you can stick around to item six on the agenda. We can talk about that. 
But as I said, the primary purpose is just to give value to you guys that have um, given up and invested what is essentially your most precious asset, which is your time. So we'll, we'll go through this uh, leadsology to find reasonably briskly, just so you get a, a real sense of, if you like, the umbrella view or the framework of leadsology, what it's really all about. Uh, do you need leadsology? We'll have a look at the symptoms. There's, there's eight symptoms there. You may be able to relate to some of them. If you don't relate to any of the symptoms, then you're good to go without anything to do with any more lead generation or leadsology. Uh, and I wanted to cover off item three. Item three is common but expensive lead generation mistakes to avoid. The reason, and it might sound a little kind of defensive or negative to say, why don't we start with the mistakes? But when I figured out the mistakes that I was making, I really wanted to save everyone else the years of frustration and disappointment that, that I wasted in figuring out what doesn't work if you're marketing the invisible. Uh, so then we'll go through and have a look at parts of the actual leadsology model. So we're going to look at you know, the market, the message, the mediums, uh, and a couple of other little things. And it's there where you're going to get the specific takeaways to plug into your business. And of course, Q&A. And as I said, for those who want to hang around after Q&A, I can tell a little bit about how I work with clients, uh, either private mentoring clients or through my program. So um, I will rock and roll. The core message is this, that if you, if you have your own business or you're a solopreneur, then if you want to enjoy a greater lifestyle choice, as well as the fulfillment that comes from serving more people, then you have to become a master of lead generation. It's not saying that nothing happens in a business until something is sold. And whilst that's true, nothing is sold until a lead is generated, an inquiry is made. And so what, what we're looking at today is the nub of that whole thing is, is how do you get the inquiries coming in? And in a specific way, which I'll, I'll share with you right now, so you've probably heard of uh, psychology, which is the, I'm sure you've heard of psychology, you know, the, the, the science of the study of the mind, and you will have heard of biology, uh, which is the, the study of living species. And over the years, I figured that getting leads coming in to a professional service or advisory practice was also a science, a hence leadsology, the science of lead generation. And so our, little logo, uh, which I hope you can see there is six inbound arrows, uh, creating a star in the middle. And the star of course represents you as the service provider, the professional advisor, and the arrows represent inbound leads. So that's our, that's our logo for leadsology. And if we wanted to define it, it's generating uh, predictable and I'll put the, put the important words here in red, predictable, systemized flow of high quality inbound new client inquiries. So what this means is we're not sending out 10,000 uh, mass uh, direct mail letters. Uh, we're not uh, bombarding people's post office boxes. We're not doing telemarketing. This is all outbound. We're not doing advertisements in a paper offering a particular thing or a widget. This is all about creating inbound leads of high quality and doing it in a manner which is predictable and systemized. So, the, the, what, what a whole lot of, well, let me get to what mistakes people make in a moment, but, but this is, this is the core of leadsology predictable. So you can wake up on any, certainly on any given month, if not every, any given week and know that there's going to be a, a, approximately how many leads are going to be flowing in. It's systemized. So at the very least a part, if not a, a significant chunk of your marketing is actually automated, which means that high quality inbound leads come in while they can come in. Indeed they do while you're on sleep or on holiday. I put a link to your model in the chat window for everybody. If you want to open that up too. Excellent. Thanks Ted. Terrific. So can you see the honeypot slide there? Yeah. Ted? Cool. Looks good. Okay. Look, looks like the broadband's working pretty well. So I just didn't want to talk ahead of the slides. So a lot of people, um, appreciate it when I highlight the difference between marketing and selling. And most of us don't like being sold to. Uh, we don't like, you know, the, the glad hand or we don't really want, uh, you know, an offer you know, disappearing and, you know, in, in 10 seconds, uh, we don't really like the cheesy multiple stacking of, you know, 10 bonuses worth $500,000. It's kind of a turnoff. And so what's the difference between marketing where we're getting, the leads coming in versus selling. And the way I explain it is that I, you imagine there's a forest 
And this is a metaphor, of course, for, for it for selling versus marketing. But in that forest, a whole bunch of grizzly bears, and they're all asleep. And those bears are a metaphor for potential clients. And, and you know that some of those bears are going to be hungry and that some of them are not going to be hungry, but you don't know which ones. And so you want the bears to eat the honey from your honey pot. So honey, of course, is, is a metaphor for your service or a device, what people pay you for. You've got a couple of options here. You, you can run through this forest and you can poke the bears with probably with a big sharp stick and wake them up and wave the honey pot in front of their nose and see if they're hungry. Now, some of the bears are gonna be pretty annoyed at that, right? And <laughs> they're gonna get, they're gonna react. And some of them who are hungry will, well, I'll react as well, but then they'll eat your honey. So this is what selling is like. Selling is what happens when you go into the marketplace and try to convince people that they should be buying what you've got. It's, it's, a, it's an outbound energy. It's a pick me, pick me, pick me energy. And it's a very coercive and a very manipulative energy because we are trying to convince someone who is not yet aware of their need, most likely, that they should be buying what you've got. And virtually no one feels comfortable with that because it's not authentic, it's disingenuous, and it's frankly manipulative. But we still need clients, right? So what do we do instead of running through the forest poking bears and hoping to heck they want to eat our honey what do we do well with leadsology it's it's much simpler than that we just put the honey pot outside the forest metaphorically speaking you don't have to rush off and buy honey pots just yet and the bears that are actually hungry and asleep will start probably dreaming that they're swimming in honey and then they'll realize that it's just a dream they'll wake up and they'll go to the source of the honey so that's what Leadsology does, is it puts, metaphorically speaking, the honeypots outside the forest. And the honeypots, in this case, are representative of valuable content that is designed to meet the specific unmet need of our ideal client. So any questions, any time, please just pop them in there. So, so therefore, it's all about creating this demand. It's all about creating the leads coming in. It's about you're opening your emails and finding out someone wants to meet to talk about your, your service, what you do, and, and wondering whether or not they can engage and work together. And it's about your mobile phone, having messages on it saying, hey, can we talk, please? I've heard about you and I'm, I'm interested in working with you. So how do you know if you need leadsology? Well, let me just pop all these symptoms up here. There's eight of them. And then I'll, I'll briefly talk to them. Seven of them, beg your pardon. Okay, so, so, so the big symptoms, when people don't have lead generation in place and they are the primary breadwinner and you know, your kids are depending on you and there's a mortgage or rent to be paid uh, and the car payments are gonna be made and, and so on and so on. The biggest symptom of needing something like leadsology is anxiety. So people you know, literally lie awake at night wondering where the next client is coming from and there's a lot of stress around, around paying bills. So stress, if you like, or anxiety is the number one symptom of needing systematic, predictable flow of inbound leads. Number two is, is, as you can see, there is a knowing. And this is a really interesting one because a lot of people don't articulate this, but it's a sense that they have, it's like a belief, but as it says there, it's deeper. You, you know you're destined to be more successful. You just have to figure out how to do it. It's, it's like you've got, you know, a 10 service or product trapped in two marketing, the world's best kept secrets. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and so often people invest so much time, quite rightly, and, and money and effort in developing a capability, a skill, which is going to be of value to people, but they fail to invest even a portion of that in getting the message out to the marketplace and figuring out how to do that. So symptom number three is restricted choice. So you, it's kind of feel like you, you, your lifestyle is in a straitjacket. So you're not really living where you want to live and the type of house you want to live. You would like to be able to afford better education for the kids, perhaps support your partner who has some philanthropic mission, but you, you kind of feel a bit hemmed in respect to those lifestyle choices. Uh, four and six, those words are running together for some reason today, but they go together. Four is onboarding the wrong clients, and as you can see, six is keeping clients who aren't a fit. So we, we, if, if you don't have enough leads coming in, the temptation is to take on clients who maybe personality-wise aren't quite a fit, or maybe their needs are not quite a fit for what you offer, but you need the money so you take them on, and yep, we've all done it, and we've all lived to regret it. 
And of course, the other side of that is once you've got those clients on board and they're paying you, then you want to keep them on board because you don't have too many other options. So these are the non-implementers who just simply aren't doing what you're asking them to do, what they've agreed to do, but you don't want to set them free because you need the money. And we know that when a client doesn't implement, they don't get value. And then you get the Dear John letter saying, hey, you know, John, Sue, whoever it is, it's not you, it's me. I didn't implement, but I need to put this on hold for a while right? <laughs> they suck the life out of us and make us work harder than ever too. Well, the, those ones tend to, and then they don't implement. And the, so as I said, they don't get value. So you don't get referrals, which is a bit of a, bit of a shame. Right. Five is another one. It's, it, it's similar in two in that it's not spoken about very often, but people who know they have a gift, a skill, a capability, and they know, they just, they just know intuitively that they need to get it out to the world. They need to get more people benefiting from it. And that's not happening. They often suffer from lower self-esteem and they, they feel often not true, but they often feel like they're not, they're less admired by their partner, their family, their kids. It's like, you know, those important people in their life are just going, oh, well, you know, that's a shame about Ted or it's a shame about Tom. You know, they, they have such great skills, but they just don't seem to be able to get the message out there. Uh, and number seven is resentment. So and the resentments, this is an interesting one. People do articulate this, but they do it in the quiet moments. And they say, you know, there's Mary down the road there and she just seems to have so many clients. And I know that she's not as good at what she does as I am. And yet she always seems to be book solid. And that's really annoying me. You know, I, 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 why can't I have those clients and I'd be doing a better job and so on. So that are the symptoms. Now, what I'm interested in, there's seven symptoms there. How many can you relate to? So you're attending this, and I can't see your answers, but Ted probably can. So just put in a number. You put in you know, two, three. Um, you've had people go all seven, you know, like all of the above. Um, so yeah. how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What have we got, Ted? Uh, here's a four. Okay. Seven for myself. <laughs> So it's, yeah. So this five. is yeah. five. Okay. Quite a few. So, so, so we know that symptoms are just that they're not the cause of the symptoms. They are just the symptoms. So we know that all of these symptoms disappear when we fix the cause. And in this case, the cause is worrying about new leads coming in and not having assurance and confidence and that sense of, predictability that the leads will flow in the trust if you like because we've got the right systems in place and we know how this thing works we know which buttons to push and which levers to pull so this next slide is is what i go through in the book it's called the leadsology model and the file that ted's kind of given you a link to will enable you to download an interactive version of this for later on so that when you mouse over say the magic then I will pop a description of what that actually means. So it's a bit more useful to you than just what you're seeing on the screen right now. But this is, this is the, these are the 10 things that need to happen in order for you to get scalable marketing and scalable value delivery happening. So by scalable, I mean that both the leads are coming in and the value or your service has been delivered in a manner which does not impact upon your free time. So you still have plenty of free time. So I, I work at most a, a four day week. I always have Wednesdays off, Saturday and Sundays off to spend kind of doing some proper selfishness stuff, some stuff that I like to do. And also to spend time with my, my beautiful wife and the wonderful Monty, the marketing wonder dog, our border collie. So that's possible, you know, living here next to the beach and running a business from my home office is possible because this model is embedded in our business. Um, now this is, I just want to just want to hasten to add that this is a hype free zone. You know, we, we don't do the, the BS promise that, you know, we've all been subjected to. This is the real stuff, uh, but I will tell you, it's a bit of work putting into place. It is not quick, simple, easy, swallow pill and it's all done. There's work involved. And well, I'm going to come back to that later on, but, but, the thing is this, that what I find is that if I'm winning, 
I don't mind working hard. I don't have to work long, but I do have to work hard. You know, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, three days a week off, plenty of holidays next to the beach, not too shabby. But when I work, I'm really focused and I work hard. So if you're comfortable with that, if you're comfortable with the idea that there's some work ahead of you, but when you invest in doing that work, you're going to get the results. You're going to feel like you're winning. Then my experience is that most people go, you know what? I'm up for that because I'm sick of chasing shiny things. I'm sick of doing, trying to, the one thing that I can put into place that's going to make the magical difference. So Legiology was born out in the real world, world, world. We're going to scoot our way around this model and pick some eyes out of it. Um, why do you want to put lead gen in place? Okay. Because lead gen, I alluded to this before, it's like the first domino in a series of dominoes that gets knocked over. You know, you have these Guinness Book of Records thing where they stack up all these dominoes. They just have to push the first one over and all the others go clickety click. So, so what are these dominoes? Well, the first one is the lead flowing into your business. You get that, the revenue domino gets knocked over. That gets knocked over. The new client domino gets knocked over. That gets knocked over. Suppliers get paid. That's another domino. And the next domino is money that flows into your personal life. And that knocks over another domino called where you live, what you live in. And so there's all these dominoes. Uh, let me get the slide finished so I can go on to the next one. And pretty much everything that everything that is financially connected in your life is one of those dominoes. And so this, this sense of, professional or personal fulfillment because your gift is out there and it's transforming people's lives or businesses. Uh, the golfer there is representative of passion pastimes, the things that you love to do in your life, whether that's meditating more or painting or uh, philanthropic work, whatever those things are outside of your business, your family, you've got more time for that and you've got the financial capacity to support that. Bottom left hand corner, where you live, the style of home you live in, uh, as I said, I, you know, we live next to the beach and that's all possible because of Leedsology. Uh, travel, international travel, holidays, where you go, how often you go, and how you support your family, bottom right-hand side there, with healthcare, education, uh, and so on, including you know, philanthropy for others and the extended family, so to speak, the community. So this all comes from that first domino. So when you... It's important that what slide you did before, you have to do the work to make yeah. that first domino fall. And once it falls, then all these other things can happen. But this, you can't just buy a course that they say, oh, buy this course and you will automatically make millions. Yeah. Well, people do that, unfortunately. A lot. And we've all, you know, we've, we've all fallen for the course of the program that, you know, this person sounds confident and it looks like they work and they certainly have all the case studies and testimonials and you buy it and you implement the darn thing and nothing, happens, nothing changes or a little bit changes. Well, that's what I tell people with LinkedIn. It, it works, but you got to do some work. And we, yeah, exactly. It works You've really work, well. <laughs> which, is, which, is, which is why we all hook up with you, Ted, because we know there is a science behind it. And we've probably all tried just doing contact requests or something. And we've gone, well, that didn't work. And, well, Ted's got the science behind it. Same deal. Okay. So let's dive into, and this is going to take probably about 10 minutes, but uh, the mistakes that people make, you will recognize you some of the things you've done in these mistakes. I've dollars to donuts. You'll go, yep, I've done that one. Yep, I did that one. Well, I'm going to tell you what the mistakes are, but I'm also going to tell you why what you tried didn't work. Okay. And it's, I love this quote from Mark Twain. It's, it's not what we don't know that hurts us. It's the things that we think we know that just ain't so. And I had a fellow Australian give me a phone call. I'm not sure how they got my number, but I guess the referral. Yeah, it was a referral. <clears throat> he said, you know, I'm coming up your way because we live, we don't live in a big city. We live in a, a small little coastal community called Castaways Beach. And he said, I'm going to drive up if you'd have a coffee with me. And I said, yeah, you look, if you want to come visit all the way from where you are, certainly I'll have a coffee with you, no problem. And uh, Steve came up and we started having coffee and, you know, we got to know each other a little bit. And he started to tell me, he said, you know, Tom, the funny thing is I know what I need to be doing with my marketing. I, I you know, I know I need to be doing, and he named this and he named that and he named this. And I said to him, 
you know, I quoted Mark Twain. I said, Steve, you know, Mark Twain once said, it's not the things we don't know that hurts us, it's the things that we think we know that just ain't so. And unfortunately, you've got a whole lot of things that you think you know, but they're not going to work. And let me tell you why they won't work. And you can see if you agree with me. But boy, there's so much stuff out there and it's so confusing for so many people is, is they, they get, they do this, the, these courses in the program and think, well, I know what I need to do. Now, let me go to this first one. <clears throat> okay. So have you heard people speak about a funnel? You know, you set up a landing page and maybe there's a video there or you offer a special report and you drive traffic to that and it's completely free and people can opt in. And once they've opt in, you set them up with a thing called an autoresponder, which says, hey, thanks for downloading our report or viewing our videos or whatever it is. Here's an idea. Why don't you buy this very inexpensive product? Click here and have a look at it. And it goes to another landing page and they offer maybe, I don't know, $47 or $40, $67 product. And as you continue, if you buy that, then you get offered something more expensive and something more expensive. So the funnel, metaphorically speaking, represented what's broad at the top. So there's lots and lots of leads going at the top. It's all free stuff. And as they go down the funnel, it's more and more expensive. And there's fewer people. That's why it's shaped like the funnel. Okay, so you heard of that, right? And we've all heard some really, really genuinely great marketers talk about product funnels or setting up tripwires and autoresponders and driving traffic, right? Now, let me, I mean, I, I, I can't see a show of hands. So I'm just going to ask a question rhetorically. You can answer it in your own mind. Have you tried setting up a funnel, you know, landing page and autoresponders and everything else? Because when I have audiences, you know, if I've got 100 people in the room, I'm speaking to them about marketing, and I say, who's tried it? We've probably got about 80 people put their hand up. They've tried some form of online marketing funnel. And I say, keep your hand up if it's actually worked. And generally, there's about one or two people who keep the hand up. So the vast, overwhelming majority of people, this does not work for. Now, I, let, me, let me add something here. Mostly, the people that are talking about this have got it working. And they're telling you to set up these online funnels because people say to them, show me what you're doing because it's obviously working so well. I said, well, we set up this online funnel and we have this free stuff and we have this low cost stuff and we have the expensive stuff and that's what you do. So people go off and try to do that. Now, this is the problem. The problem is this. This funnel works really well. And the reason we've got the swift flying river here is that this is a high flow model. So if you have 10,000 visitors to your website, to that landing page specifically, if not every day, then at least every week, then you got yourself a keeper. You've got yourself something that will work using those principles of the online funnel. If, however, you only have, say, 800 visitors a month, then this will not work for you because it's a high flow strategy applied to a low flow website. Now, should you have a landing page? You betcha. But don't depend on it initially to generate new clients. That's for when you build up enough of a brand, or you figure out Facebook advertising, which, which we do as, as well, and you can generate the volume that you need to make a funnel work. Without the volume, the funnels won't work, okay? So that's mistake number one, is applying a high flow model to a low flow website. Mistake number two is, is where people put the cart before the horse, and the cart represents tactics and the horse represents strategy. So if you look at that leadsology model, which you've hopefully downloaded, you'll see that, you know, it's the message, the market, the mediums, the and so on. And there's a bunch of questions that you need to ask. And, and one of the foremost questions, which is a part of the horse, is what do my ideal clients need to see or hear in order to want to know more? What do my ideal clients need to see or hear in order to want to know more? In other words, what's my marketing message? And of the very, very many people who have asked me a question, which is typically the same question, which is, I have a great product or service. I just don't seem to be able to get new clients on board. Can you look at my marketing? Tell me what I'm doing wrong because I'm frustrated. You know, I, I feel like I'm the, as I said before, the world's best kept secret. And when I look at the marketing, the first thing that is glaringly obvious is they don't have an effective marketing message. So whatever marketing they're doing, whether it's uh, business networking meetings or online funnels or landing pages, or whatever they're doing, uh, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, a medium I would use or not, it isn't going to work because they haven't figured out what their ideal client needs to hear in order for them to be motivated to want to know more. And, and I'll, I'll give you a specific formula for the marketing message because I don't want to be one of those guys that just tells you this is what you need to do 
but then I don't tell you how to do it. Okay. But that is another mistake is people engage in, uh, in tactics in doing marketing activity before they figured out the strategy. David has a comment about that. It says this marketing new per marketing person is doing this and it's not working, but it's working for the marketers who are selling their products basically. Well, if they haven't figured out the message that that doesn't even working for them. I mean, yeah. sure. There's, there's definitely a bunch of people out there that are rip off artists and they're very good at marketing. Their product is rubbish. And as soon as you buy it, they run away. There are those people uh, in a big market like the U S and Europe, they tend to survive. They don't survive down under because we've got a smaller market and word gets out pretty quick. Mm -hmm. But so let's assume that you all have a great product or service that can transform the life of the business of your ideal client. I ain't going to do you no good until you get the marketing message right and you get the brilliance of what it is you do and the uniqueness of what it is you do aligned with your marketing message. Uh, otherwise, I, I had a, a business coach the other day. Uh, he booked a consult and we got talking and I had a look at his website and LinkedIn profile and so on before the call, which incidentally I'm going to offer everyone on this call because you're Ted's chosen few. Uh, but, I, but I said to him, well, because he, it was pretty evident based on what he had told me. And I was assuming what he was told me was true. And some of the case studies I'd referenced, that he was actually exceptionally good at what he did. He could go in and really take a, I mean, a real bricks and mortar business with, you know, millions of dollars turnover and he could get that thing absolutely smoking. But I said to him, well, here's the problem. Uh, let's imagine that your ideal client is sitting in front and wants to buy a book and the book is a metaphor for a business coach. And he's looking at a bookshelf and there's like a thousand books on that bookshelf and you're one of the books, but your content is rich and valuable and engaging. It's a page turner of a book and you're, you're sitting there in that book and you're thinking, it's got to choose me because my book is the best book on the shelf. And it is, and it is right. But the ideal clients look at all these books and the covers all look the same. And metaphorically speaking, let's translate that. The words he was using on his LinkedIn profile, same as every other business coach. The words he's using on his website, same as every other business coach. So from the outside, his marketing message appeared to be, was in fact the same as everyone else. Now, how do we judge a book? By its cover. Should we do that? No, but we do. So with your, I'm stealing the thunder a little bit for another slide, but but failing to have a marketing message, which clearly communicates your difference in a benefit rich manner means that you just look like all the other books on the bookshelf and people pass you by. Okay. Next mistake. Uh, as I said, I kind of went into that because of the, the, because of the comment that came up word of mouth marketing. So relying on word of mouth marketing, you have a business that is about as stable as this little, stick figure here on the blocks, you know, one day it falls over. So you can, boy, I, a lot of my best clients are great coaches and consultants, architects, software, software developers, you know, people essentially marketing invisible and they, they can often go for a year or two or even three years just on random referrals from ex clients. But one day it stops and that's when I get the call and I, they go, I need something a bit more dependable. So word of mouth marketing, uh, someone once said, you know, the scariest number in business is one. You have one lead source. That's scary. You have one main client. That's scary. You have one main supplier or employee or contractor that is the life and soul of your business. That's scary. So don't let that number one, the only one be a problem for you in the future. Okay. So I hope, I hope even though I'm going through this kind of, these are the negatives, I'm hoping this is valuable for you and you can, if you're not already doing these mistakes, you can avoid them in the future. Okay. Next mistake is, is failing to understand the principles of the pipeline. So what's a pipeline? Th this pipeline represents the duration between when a prospect hears about you or your brand and when they actually buy. So in one end of the pipeline, we have leads coming in and the other end, we have clients coming out. Now, the first two mistakes that people make with this is exactly the same, but for different reasons. So let's say someone's out there and they're 
And I'm not saying you want to do this, but let's say people are out there and they're running webinars or they're going to business network meetings and they're collecting business cards and are connecting with people on LinkedIn and they've got a Facebook and blah, blah, blah. it's all going. And everyone's getting re recognizing the brand and they're doing a good job of getting out there at least. You know, maybe the marketing messaging is all tweaked, but they're out there in the marketplace and all the leads are going to the pipeline. And they don't get any clients coming out, so they stop putting the leads in because the clients didn't immediately start coming out the other end. And a pipeline, we use that as a metaphor because there is a duration, there is a period of time, therefore, which we have to keep putting the leads in before they start coming out the other end. So mistake number one, you put the leads in, nothing happens, so you stop putting the leads in. You go, well, that was a waste of time. Finding to recognize that there is a period of time where you need to put the leads in. Mistake number two is you put the leads in, and some clients come out, you pick up some work and you go, yay, I got some clients. So you stop putting the leads in. Same mistake, right? But for a different reason. One is the clients weren't coming out. The other reason is the clients are coming out. But either way, the leads stopped going in. So those first two principles or first two mistakes from the pipeline uh, are solved, of course, simply by continuing to put the leads in. Now, the third failure is a failure to recognize that every pipeline has holes in it. And the holes are a metaphor for your brand falling out of the brain of your prospect. So we need like a drip tray that recirculates and keeps putting the leads in. And social media is great for this. Social media is great for keeping your brand in their brain until they're ready to buy. So there's the three mistakes that people make with a pipeline. Failure to keep putting the leads in because they're coming out. Failure to put leads in because they're not coming out. And a failure to recirculate the prospect to keep the brand in the brain ready to buy. I'm going to flick on to, yeah, this slide here sums up the last three slides. Okay. Imagine there's a door, and on the other side of that door is what you want. It's more, more cash flow, more clients, more revenue. The hinges on that door can be lead conversion or sales. In other words, you've got someone who's interested. How do you, if they're a fit, lead them to the purchase, to a wise purchase? And the second hinge is exactly how good is the service that you offer? So. These are critically important. In order to get more revenue growth, to get through the door, these are critically important. Your hinges have to be strong, rust-free, and well-oiled. You've got to have a conversion process, and you've got to deliver some value. In, 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 you know, you've got to deliver people what they want. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter how strong those hinges are, you will never get through the door without the key. So this mistake is around going to lots of sales courses and the series conversion and how do I hold a consult and how do I do a proposal and just going to more and more and getting that hinge better and better and better. And it's around if you, you know, if you've got a great, a great product, then it's good enough. If you've got a great service, it's good enough. So quit messing with it. The hinge is strong enough. You need the key now. So, so that's the other mistake is people think it's all about sales. Well, you've actually got, you can't convert any leads until you've got a lead, right? So, and until you've got the lead generated, they can't experience your service. Okay, next mistake is thinking that social media will deliver new clients. Now, LinkedIn should not be on the screen because LinkedIn is a source of new clients. And if you follow Ted's system, it's a gold mine. Uh, so, and LinkedIn is not, I don't know, Ted, do you call LinkedIn social media? It's kind of that, yes. Different. Maybe, maybe it has a foot in both camps. It's a community. Uh, yeah. And, and the thing with LinkedIn, and you go there because it's a business community. You go there to, to get leads. You go there to help people business-wise. You're not going to Facebook to, to connect business-wise. These days, it's a little different because we have a lot of business groups. on. But primarily, it's a social communication platform. The thing with, as I said, take LinkedIn off this slide. There's a couple of irons in there. If I could get rid of them, I would. But with the majority of social media, what you're catering for is you're catering for a segment of the market that I call the wanderers. You have three segments to your audience. The seekers who are ready to buy, they are in pain or they're aware of their opportunity and they come along and see your effective marketing message, which I'll show you how to do in a moment, and they buy. They're the seekers. You then have the explorers who are also aware of their, their need but they're not quite ready to buy, possibly because they've been burnt before and they're a bit more cautious or because they're just generally more conservative individuals. The seekers are about 3% of your audience, the ones that'll buy it straight away if they get a good marketing message and a good offer. 
the the explorers are around 12 percent of your audience but 85 percent of your audience are wanderers and they're just going to wander around and breeze in and out of twitter and linkedin maybe uh, youtube certainly facebook certainly and they're just wandering around kind of smelling the flowers they're not ready to buy and it's kind of like you're putting the leads in if they're connecting with you on facebook and linkedin and twitter and google plus and Russia, you're putting the leads in the pipeline when they connect with you, but they're not ready to buy. So you need to keep the brand, your brand in their brain until you're ready to buy and blogs and podcasts and social media is terrific for doing that. But just remember it's a nurture style of marketing. We're keeping the brand in the brain until they're ready to buy. You still need the direct response or call to action style of marketing where they get where you go for the seekers and the explorers where you're going, here's an offer. Would you like to invest? So don't make the mistake of thinking that social media is going to give you clients. It's very good for keeping your brand in the brain until you're ready to buy. Okay. Archimedes said, give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum which to place that I shall move the world. He's talking about leverage or scalability. And one of the mistakes I see people making is that they put a lot of personal inertia into their marketing and they haven't yet developed what I call EMAs or educational marketing assets. Now there's three of my books up there. There's uh, we have this business owners marketing brief thing, which is a vlog. It's a video blog. We've got lots of lead magnets. So what will we've done here with these educational marketing assets, metaphorically speaking, not to confuse you, but these are your honey pots. These are the things you're putting outside there is you get scalability, you get leverage. So a lot of these things can be attracting uh, new subscribers and new followers, new connections while you're asleep or on holiday, but you don't get, the leverage unless you've developed the asset. So the fulcrum there, the triangle you see or pyramid, EMAs, educational marketing assets. Every single time that I put a lead magnet or a honeypot out there into the marketplace, I want to make sure that it has embedded in it some form of educational value whereby people can go out and implement at least one thing and see a change. It's not just a tease. And I think it's really important when you develop your EMAs uh, and EMAs, we can go through them, but they can be books. They don't have to be books. They can be webinars. They don't have to be webinars. They can be articles. They can be blog posts. They can be LinkedIn. Uh, they can just so many you can choose from. And every time you do that, you embed some value in there. You improve the quality and the attractiveness of your brand. And it gives you scalability. You can bring in new clients, and deliver value with, with other type of scalability in less time. Okay. I should pause just to see if there's any questions before we go into the model. If anyone has questions, go ahead and type them in. Questions, comments, observations, fact, fiction, or fantasy. Well, I just have a bit of water here. So back on your last slide, I have a, I was at LinkedIn today at their headquarters for a advertising workshop and they explained, your first touch, like the beginning of the funnel people that aren't, don't, they're just getting to know you. You don't have to give them a webinar or a big asset, a hundred page ebook or something. Yeah. yeah. It can be just a little chart. Like you're the, the like we share here, your model, something yeah. simple. So they get familiar with you and as they yeah. get deeper into your funnel, you get more advanced with what you give them. Yeah. So, so the, these people that you're just talking about, they're what I call, I have a formula, it's called the SO formula, S-E-W, as in you're sewing something, uh, and it stands for the, the seekers, the explorers, and the wanderers. So what you're talking about there are the wanderers. And if I can explain in a metaphor, let's say you're in the woods uh, or forest, and you Sunday morning, you're just going for a walk. You're going for a wander, right? You're a wanderer, in my little metaphor. Yeah. But you see something shiny, and that something shiny is just a few meters into the trees and you got to kind of push through a few things and you really don't know what it is. It's just caught your corner of your eye. I mean, here in Australia, it could be a kangaroo just went by and deposited something that's nice and glistening and moist and the sun's shining off the surface. So it could be a pile of crap, right? But as you get there, it's not actually a pile of crap. It's a diamond. So you pick the diamond up and you think, wow, this is my lucky day. Now here's, here's a question. This is to illustrate, how you move people from being curious to very interested. So you pick the diamond up, you put it in your pocket. Anyone, what do you think is the next thing you're going to do? 
just found a diamond. I think you're going to look around, right? Just found a diamond. Maybe there's some more diamonds here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so you pick that up, you put it in your pocket and you have a look around and now you decide, well, I can't see any more diamonds here, but now you're walking along the trail. You're looking for more diamonds. Now, why did I tell that little metaphor? Okay. When people go to LinkedIn and they go to Facebook and so on, they're going for a wander. They're often not going with a serious intent to purchase a particular, in this case, find a diamond. But if they find a diamond in your, in your, in your LinkedIn articles, or there's a video on your landing page, or there's a Facebook, there's an offer. If they find a diamond, they think, wow, this is pretty valuable. They shift from being a wanderer to an explorer. An explorer is looking for things. And that's how we move people from the segment of curious wanderer to explorer, someone with significant intent looking for something specific and eventually to a seeker who, is, is, who wants a specific product. So the wanderer just wants a shiny thing that adds value to their life. They want it simple, quick, easy. One page is perfect for this. So the, the model, the ideology model, that's, that's there for the wanderers. And this is around matching your message to the marketplace. If you put the wrong message in front of an ideal client, it's like, well, I've got Monty here, the marketing wonder dog. He's a border collie. And I also have a beehive. So I can go to Monty's dinner dish and I can put a bunch of flowers in there. That's going to be a hard sell, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I can put it in front of the beehive and they'll be swarming all over it. And likewise, I can put a steak in front of the beehive and they just show no interest. But of course I put it in Monty in front of Monty. There is no selling required. This is what good marketing does. It finds an ideal client who has a specific unmet need that they are aware of and it matches their need to the message. So there's, there's an awful lot in there and there's probably a whole webinar in itself, but, but we might, we might have a look at this thing called the marketing message and the mediums. So this, let's have a look at this model that's on the screen right now. First prerequisite for effectively generating inbound leads is you have some magic. You have something that is transformational in the life or business of your ideal client. They get a shift. You can show them, I don't know, how to lose weight, how to have a happier relationship, uh, how to have a landing page. There's a copywriter here, right? So how to have a landing page that converts people, that get, you know, how to create a marketing message that gets cut through and motivates people. Uh, you, you can be business systems. You can be just-in-time inventory specialist. You can be a merger integration specialist. You can be, I don't know, but, there's got to be a transformation in the life or the business of your ideal client. If you don't have that, I can't help you. And no amount of marketing will compensate for that. Well, at least karmically speaking, yes, you're always going to get the people who do not have magic, but say they have, and they rip people off. I don't want their karma. You know, I believe in you, 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 you reap what you sow and you want to make the world a better place, not a, not a poorer place. But let's assume everyone here has some magic. They have something that they do, which is pretty darn cool. Then we have to look at who's the ideal client, and that's the market. What is their unmet need? Uh, and then we create a, create a message about your magic and put it into the market. And the medium simply answers the question, well, how do I get the message about my magic into the market? Do I do articles? Do I do blog posts? What do the honeypots look like? What does the diamond on the trail look like? How do I get people, the wanderers, to pick up that first diamond? And then, having done that, they, their awareness of their need increases. Okay, so let's have a look at a little bit of that. So uh, if you download that model, then lots of things will pop up. Let's have a look at the magic. Now, I want to introduce you to Susan. Susan's an exceptional consultant slash trainer slash coach. <clears throat> and this is what she used to market prior to working through my leadsology system. And you can see it there, leadership, high performing teams, I don't even know what some of these things are. Organizational dynamics. Uh, yes, strategy, planning, human resource, business case development, engagement, organizational change, transition planning, executive coaching, culture development, operation, reviews, business process improvements. Whew. Okay. So first thing I say to Susan is pick one. 
And I still remember saying, she said, what, what do you mean pick one? I can do all those things. Yep, you can do all those things, but you can't market all those things. So which is the one piece of magic that you love doing the most, that is in the most demand, that people will pay the most for? Pick that one, because that's the one thing we're gonna market. Now, listen up, good people. Everything else comes off your website. If you go to Ted's website, it's all LinkedIn. And Ted's got so many years of experience under his belt. I'll bet you dollars to donuts, he can do management, he can do all sorts of stuff. But all you're gonna get on, link, on, on Ted's website is LinkedIn because he's smart enough to pick one. So if you've got four, five, six, seven, eight things you can do, well, that's really nice. Pick one, and that's the only thing that should be on your website. It's the only thing that should be on your LinkedIn page. It's the only thing on your closed Facebook group. It is the one thing. Now, you can still do the other stuff, but you want to be marketing is the one thing. Everything else goes to hidden URL. So that if you have a client who says, well, do you do organizational dynamics, you can say, sure do, here's the URL, it's a hidden URL. But everything else for the, for the public comes off that. So what, what Susan picked is productivity. So if you just compare it, let's say you're a CEO and you're concerned about productivity in your organization, and you read the before example, you know, I wonder what Susan, Susan does, I heard she's really good, let me go to a website, let me go to a LinkedIn profile, and you read all that. And you go, wow, okay, phew, that's a lot, I gotta think about that. But if you see, I show leaders how to lift measurable productivity by 25% in just eight weeks, that's got cut through and you've just matched the message to the market. Can you guys see how this is not, this is not woo woo. This is a science. This is not wishing, hoping and praying. This is stuff that you can actually learn and actually implement and it actually works. Okay. So that's, that's an example of magic. Pick one. The market. There are I'm clean on one thing before you go on. Yeah, please. It took me a long time to just pick LinkedIn because I had all those other things. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and how much more powerful is your marketing when you just got that one thing? It's so much easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because strategy, one of the implications of strategy is that we've got to focus. And if you look at sports strategy or military strategy, God forbid military, let's just talk about sport. No one, normally no one dies in sport. Then what a good coach is going to do is they're going to look at the weaknesses on the other team. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a team. It could be tennis or golf. And they're going to look at, you know, your strengths as a player. And they're going to have you focus on your strengths primarily and then the opposition's weaknesses. So it's a focus. And, you know, with military strategy, you're always focusing the most force on the least vulnerable or the most vulnerable area. And so with marketing, principles are similar, is that we need to focus. We need to get your resources, which includes your time, probably a bit of money, not too much, I wouldn't recommend, but some money and some energy. And we need to get you focused on a portion of the market where you're gonna get the highest return and the most professional and personal satisfaction and fulfillment. So your ideal client has three characteristics. Now, this will be important for you to remember for when we get to the message, because remember, we want to match the message to the market. So the ideal client, uh, let me just flick through here, back again. Yeah, now I'm going to go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself here. Got excited. So the ideal client, Characteristic number one is they're aware of their need for what you've got. They're a seeker. If they, they wake up, if they don't wake up in the morning thinking about the fact that they need a solution, they wake up in the middle of the night thinking about it. So my ideal is clients will often wake up in the morning or if not in the middle of the night thinking, God, I need new clients. I got to figure out a way to get new clients on board. So they have a heightened awareness of their need. They have the money to pay for what you've got. It's not an issue. They don't say come back next financial year or we don't have the budget for it or I'm broke. They got the money. This is an ideal client and the timing is perfect. They're actually seeking a solution. Okay. That's an ideal client. What will benefit you is if you niche and you can niche, whoops, go back, go back, go back, go back. You can niche in any one or different ways, but as soon as you pick a market, just like you picked a service, then you're able to speak their language. Uh, for example, I, you know, I don't work with restaurateurs because they speak a particular language. Retailers, well, they're like kind of like the third gender. 
or maybe it's the fifth gender now, I'm not sure, but they're different. You know, they have specific language and specific needs. Uh, manufacturers, retailers, restaurateurs, uh, you know, people who sell houses. I can't speak the language. I'm better to niche in people who have a professional service or advice then I can speak. I can speak your language about consults and about services and all sorts of stuff about scalability. I can increase rapport and credibility. I can meet your specific needs. When we actually work together, I can be so prescriptive about what you need to do. Step one, step two, step three, and you can do it. But in the old days, when I was selling to every, you got a business, then I'll help you. I could not be as specific. And so when you get more specific about who it is you're going to serve, you can be more prescriptive. And therefore of more value because people will find it easier uh, to, to, to implement. So more relevance, more value. And also the number one referral factor is have you worked in their industry? Have you worked with someone in there and helped someone in their industry? So if they're a telco, have you worked for other telecommunication companies? Uh, if you're an internet marketing, have, has, have you worked with, with, you know, has the supplier worked with other internet marketers? If you've got a sore back, has the supplier work with other people who've got a sore back, okay? So that's the benefit of the smaller the niche, the bigger the market. So here's a, another case study. So here, I'll introduce you to Gordon. Gordon's a kinesiologist here in Australia. And so beforehand, he had a whole lot of things he could do in a whole lot of different markets. So one of his markets was children with learning difficulties. Another market was couples with relationship challenges. And another market was individuals who had health challenges and a fourth market with students wanting to learn kinesiology. So before, in respect to your magic, I said, pick one. Now, in respect to the market, I'm saying, pick one. So what uh, Gordon did is he just said, I'm going to just market my services to the market who have children with learning difficulties. And what happened is, and I got this email, it was unsolicited from Gordon. He said, whereas before we had frequent gaps in our bookings, we're often now booked out weeks ahead. Because he's seen this market as the specialist and the specialists uh, often have a waiting list. They always earn more than the general practitioner and, and they are sought out. So that's a little bit about your magic, a little bit about your market. Now let's look at the big one. Uh, and I, gee, I need to keep an eye on the time here. Ted, how much longer have I got? Can you give me a time check on that? Uh, we're at one hour now. So when, when do you need me finished by? Uh, however, this is great. I'm loving it. Okay. So we're good for another 30 maybe? Yeah. Cool. That'd be good. Okay. So the message. Uh, the message has three characteristics. It needs to be benefit rich, differentiated, and contain specifics. Now I'm going to bring that to life by giving you some examples. Okay. But let's look at the message. And I, I want to some, people get so confused with marketing. So I want to make this incredibly simple, but incredibly effective for you. So I'm going to sum up all good marketing one slide to do that i need to just remind you that the ideal client has three characteristics they're aware of the need they have the money and the timing is perfect and then we look at the three characteristics of a message which is benefit rich uh, ideally contains something specific and i'll tell you why in a moment and it, it's just something is different to what everyone else is saying so when we put those together we get effective marketing. Every single lead in the world in the history of mankind for the past and the present and the future is generated when the sweet spot, when you intersect an ideal client with an effective marketing message. And it doesn't matter if you've got that message on a billboard, a radio advertisement, if you're out at a networking meeting or someone's referred you, an ideal client or where they need uh, they have the money and the timing's perfect. They're a seeker. They're looking for a solution is intersected by an effective marketing message. And that's when they inquire. That's when they either call you or email you and say, can we talk? Or they go ahead and buy what you've got, depending on the, the, the type of service you have. So if you want to make marketing simple and easy to understand, this slide will do it for you. So I have not oversimplified this. This is just a nice, simple, big picture view of how leads are generated. So understanding this, then we've got to figure out where do our ideal clients hang out and what are the mediums through which I can get my effective marketing message out to them? Because as soon as you intersect an ideal client with an effective marketing message, you've got yourself an inquiry. So how do you know if you've got an effective marketing message? 
Great question. And the answer is it's called the dinner party test. And so what I want you to imagine is that you're sitting at a dinner party and the person sitting next to you turns out to be an ideal client. And they start telling you all about their problems or the opportunities which you can actually solve. And you're sitting here thinking, oh my goodness, they just I probably had one too many glasses of Napa Valley red wine. And they're going, they've got this problem. I've got this opportunity. I just can't find a solution, but I need to solve this problem. I need to fulfill this opportunity. And somehow you figure out they've got plenty of money and they need to, they want to act now. And then after a while, I've been pouring out their problems or opportunity to you. They put their glass down, they turn to you and say, look, I'm so sorry. I've been telling you all about my stuff. <clears throat> what is it that you do? <clears throat> Pardon me, throat. And the answer, the words that come out of your lips at that point should not be greeted with eyes being glazed over and them turning away with a weak smile saying, oh, that's nice. Like, you know, you're working for the IRS, you know, the tax collectors. It should be greeted with, oh, how do you do that? And their eyes will actually widen and they'll sit up. I mean, literally, their eyes will widen, they'll sit up and they will say, oh, well, how do you do that? Or they'll say, well, how does it work? something like that. And by definition, a lead has then been generated. Now, let me show you a before and after example of the dinner party test at work. So here's Max. Can you see Max yet? Yeah. Cool. So here's Max. So before we work together <clears throat> at the dinner party, Max would say, we create point of sale software for quick service restaurants. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just gonna get some water. We create point of sale software for QSRs and QSRs is industry jargon for quick service restaurants. It's places like McDonald's, Subway, Burger King, you know, the type of fast food outlet, right? <clears throat> so let's say Max is sitting next to, hmm, I don't know, Adele. And Adele owns eight McDonald's outlets. And she's pouring it. She's had two glasses of the snapper rally red wine, which has got a lot to answer for obviously. And she's pouring out a problem. She's saying to Max, I just keep buying these McDonald's outlets, but that's not the answer because we're not really increasing sales. We're not getting more productivity. We're not increasing profits. I got to find a way to increase sales in these darn restaurants of mine. And then she puts the glass down and she turns to Max and said, I'm sorry, Max, what is it that you do for a living? I've been talking all about my problems. And Max says, well, funny you ask, we create software for QSRs, point of sale software. And Adele's eyes would glaze over and she'd think, oh God, that's the last thing I need. Some guy trying to flog me some more software. We've already got point of sale software. So she smiles weakly and turns away and says, that's nice and goes somewhere else. <clears throat> Work on his marketing message. Now remember, we've got an ideal client. She's aware of her needs. She's got the money, the timing is perfect. And we want to create a marketing message, which is benefit rich, which is differentiated and contains some specifics because the specifics create differentiation themselves and they get cut through uh, because they add believability. Let me give you what we came up with. <clears throat> Adele says, clients for problems, turns to Max, what do you do? It's just funny you ask Adele, we actually increase the sales and profits in QSRs by 25% within 90 days. Pause, told them to pause at that point. Oh, and we can guarantee that. That's Max. Okay. Now, that message is benefit rich. It contains specifics and it's different to what all of Mac's competitors were doing, which was talking about point of sale software for quick service restaurants. So suddenly there's Adele standing in front of a bookshelf of a thousand books and Max's is the only color cover that's in color. She's going to reach for Max's book. She's going to reach out to Max and say, Max, how do you do that? And that's how you craft an effective marketing message. And we can talk about the mediums in a moment and which ones are most effective for wanderers versus explorers versus seekers. But that's how you create an effective marketing message. Now, I want you to note, please, this is really important. At no point and no place in Max's message did he mention his product, which is software. Huh, that's interesting. And the reason why he hasn't mentioned, because his ideal client doesn't care. I'm sorry, but it's true. They actually don't care 
about what it is you do until they know what it is it does. They don't care about what you do until they know what it does. When they take the message, when they get the message, it gets, gets cut through and they go, I, I want that. That's when they say, well, how do you do that? So Max, Max could have been an interior restaurant redesigner architect fella. He could have been putting more cars into the car park. Uh, he could have been customer service training. He could have been new seating, new lighting, new signage. Adele doesn't care. She only cares about getting the benefit. Okay. I got an unsolicited email from Max at the end of last year. Oh, I want you to let you know I have three new people starting in the next six weeks. I've increased turnover by more than 50% in the last year, and I can't handle more leads, which is a quality problem to have. And the reason he wrote that is we had this little joke when we first started working together. He said, I've got a problem. He said, I said, he said, what's, I said, I said, what's your problem? He said, we don't, I just don't have enough sales. I don't have leads. I don't have enough clients. I said, well, that is a pretty poor quality problem. What we want to do is we want to give you a good quality problem. He said, what do you mean? He said, well, I want you to not be out of service all the inquiries you're getting in. That's a quality problem to have. And that's why it's written that little thing there. Okay. Now, once you've got a great message, what you do is you cascade it like a waterfall throughout your market. You put it, you embed the, the message, the benefit in testimonials. I don't just say, oh, Max is a nice guy to work with, or Max has got swell software. What Max's testimonials will say is Max increased the sales in our restaurant by more than 25%, or well, Max got our sales up almost immediately by 33%. Or after 90 days, we had sales an extra 50%. So the testimonials, <clears throat> the marketing message is embedded in the testimonials, it's embedded in the guarantees. It's embedded in trademarks. It's embedded in reports. It, you sprinkle this darn message throughout your marketplace like confetti, but you keep the message the same. And that's the point of this alignment in the waterfall is it's the same message. Uh, it's on your LinkedIn profile. It's, it's, it's in your the core service you're offering it's in everything you do, this message is repeated to the point where you probably get bored of it, <laughs> but you've got total alignment. And, and of the very few people that get an effective marketing message, what they do with it is they do this with it. They change it. It says one thing on the website, another thing on their LinkedIn profile. The testimony will say something else again. And, and the, the social media interviews are saying something different again. And the business card has got, Something completely different on it. So there's no alignment. And so it doesn't freaking will work. Now, it'll work for the seekers, the 3% of your audience. But for the 12% of the audience, which is your opportunity to five times your sales, they need multiple validations of your marketing message. They have to hear that message repeated multiple occasions through different mediums. You've heard, you've heard probably the American Research Association say that people buy somewhere on average between the fifth and seventh exposure to your brand. They are the explorers. They are the ones, and we've tracked this, we know. We, they come to a website, they buy the book, two days later they come back, they do the diagnostic, then they download the model and they come to a webinar and they, they buy. They are explorers. We got the seekers, only 3% of the audience buy the book, join the program, bang, bang. So it's in order to capture to five times your marketing, uh, results, then what you do is you create that effective marketing message and you cascade it through the marketplace like this waterfall here. That's it. Okay. Now the mediums, well, you need multiple marketing mediums and you, the reason you need that is to cater for the explorers, but also if you just have a one legged stool for your marketing, it's going to fall over one day. If it's just, I don't know, you know, the local newspaper advertising or it's just word of mouth referral, or it's uh, you know Google AdWords. If it's just one thing, if it's just webinars or just a book, one day it will stop working. Trust me, I have experienced the pain. But what you need is you need four legs to your marketing stool. You need at least four sources of new leads flowing in, and that way you have stability. And every financial planner, wealth management consultant worth their salt will tell you that when you invest, you must diversify your assets across multiple investment areas so that you have stability and so you eliminate or at least mitigate the risk. So this is, uh, let me introduce you to Dawn, another case study. So Dawn got all of, her, all of her business through personal networking meetings and word of mouth marketing. 
And then after a while, working together, she created a book. I showed her how to do that. Physical and Kindle version, special report, physical special report, or white paper, uh, surveys, a diagnostic assessment, and webinars. So of course, she still has uh, seminars as well, what we call breakfast showcases, you know, lunch and learn type meetings. So what, what, what Dawn developed was scalability around her market, our little thing called OPN. If I don't I tell you what OPN is, ask me during the Q&A because it is, it is the single most powerful marketing concept that I've ever created, bar none. So you might want to know about that. So her brand is Heartware. And if you search Heartware, the Heartware group, you'll, you'll be able to download her white papers and do all the other stuff. You know, there's the so what, what she's got is she's got this scalability I talked about before right? Where she's got these honey pots, these educational marketing out, assets out there, and she can generate the leads while she's on holiday in part, or she's asleep. I, you know what? Um, oh, okay. One more concept. Um, man. We've got time for this, Ted? Or we, yeah, we do. Okay. Let me just go back. So let's look at the model. Now, the model in this case refers to your value delivery model. Can you deliver the value in a manner which is scalable, which means you can serve more people and generate more revenue, but in less time? Can you have a model where you enjoy delivering the service? And can you have a model which is highly profitable? The answer, of course, is yes, you can. Well, how do you do that? Well, the thing that you put out into the marketplace for people to buy, it's what I call your front end of this model. There's a front end, there's a back end. You might've heard those terms. So typically what you do is you put something out to the marketplace, which gives people a very satisfying and valuable experience of your service. Uh, I have a eight week program called the Leadsology program, but behind that you might have something that's higher ticket item, even again, uh, you know, I mean, people can start my program for 197 a month, which is pretty good. Uh, but if you know we're doing private co consulting work, it's very often twenty-five thousand. So that's at the back end. So what I want to look at though is what is at your front end, because we want to have something at the front that you know we we talked about the magic pick one, talked about the market pick one, we create one message. We have multiple mediums. Okay, what is it that we're actually going to be asking people to buy? And that's this this model here. So we want to make that as attractive as possible. So what I, what I talk about in the book, Leadsology, The Science of Being in Demand, is, is what I call the value slider. And I want to give you a case in point. Let me pop all this okay, up on the screen here. Okay. So on the right-hand side are seven characteristics of your front-end service. Now, just to put some flesh on the bones. My front-end service is an eight-week online program, which is fully supported with Q&A, with individual support but it's an eight week program called Leadsology. It's a Leadsology program. And that's what I mean by front end. But I wanna give you this case study of a client pre-engagement who was a cost analysis consultant, a cost analysis consultant. So what Sam would do is he'd go into a business or you know, bricks and mortar business and he would analyze their sales by product line and figure out which ones had the most product profit, which ones had the least profit. He goes through all their costs and, add, and figure out which ones were giving them a return on investment or not. So this is like a six month deal where he would go and talk to the business owner, collect all this information, work with the accountant slash CPA, get information from them, go back, analyze anything, come back with reports and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now, marketing that was problematic because in terms of these desirable characteristics represented on the right hand side, specific benefits, a significant transformation, getting faster results, a higher return on investment, make it simpler for me, make it easier, make it very relevant to my needs. This is what people will buy. So we, we've got the message into the market through the medium, and now someone's made an inquiry. They're saying, well, how does it work? And if what you present to them has vague benefits, the perception is they'll be worse off after it rather than better off, the results are slow, they're going to get a very low return on investment or they're going to lose their money. And it seems very complex and it's hard to implement. It's not that relevant. They ain't going to buy, no matter how good your marketing message is, right? <laughs> so we've got the lead in. We've got the inquiry generated. Now you want to present them with a value proposition that is so powerful. They go, boy, you've got to be brain dead to say no to this one. So this is, this is Sam's value proposition. 
he wasn't, he didn't have a great marketing benefit. So we're going to give him five out of 10 for uh, articulating specific benefits. After he worked with people for six months, if the clients lasted that long, they were significantly better off. So we're going to give him seven out of 10 for that. It took six months. So he's only going to get a three out of 10 for that. Uh, the return on investment was exceptional. He would charge literally $25,000, but that have at least another 10,000 in their bank account at the end of every month. So it really took them less than three months to get a return on investment. And then they had the extra cash in the bank account for the rest of their careers, for the rest of the life of the business. So 10 out of 10 for return on investment. It was complex and it was hard. So he's only going to get one out of 10 for that. Uh, and yeah, it was quite relevant to the needs. So we'll give them seven out of 10. So if we look at those and we multiply it, we have, a value slider factor of 48%. In other words, people's perception, their feeling of attractiveness towards this particular product or service is 48 out of 100. It's okay, but it's not gonna fly off the shelves. So what we did is I said, what I want you to do, Sam, is I want you to create an eight week program. He said, you can't do that. I said, well, you can, but you know, if I put a gun to your wife's head, God forbid. And I said, you gotta turn this into an eight week program. Could you do it? He said, well, yeah, I could do it. Okay, so you can do it. Okay, uh, we want to get your marketing message saying instead of talking about cost analysis consultant, we want to talk about I'll show you how to have another ten thousand dollars in your bank account at the end of every month without having to work harder or get any more clients on board. Just whatever you've got right now, give it to me. So, a week program. We took the twenty percent of the stuff that produced eighty percent of the result, and we gave put that in the program. We cut out the accountant who always slowed things down. We cut out the business owner who always slowed things down. We hired a virtual uh, whiz kid in the Philippines gave him cloud access to all the books and got all the numbers crunched. So we could speed the whole process up, shrink it from six months, almost the whole process down to eight weeks. Uh, now message the magic a bit better as I've already referenced. So we have to have a look at this value slider, very specific benefits, 10 out of 10 for that because it's $10,000 extra in your bank account. So we know they're very significantly better off we've still got to take two months or eight weeks to get the results. So we're going to give a seven out of 10 for that. Very high return on investment, exactly the same as before. So that's still a 10 out of 10, way simpler and way easier. So instead of a one or a two out of 10, we're giving them 10 out of 10 for that and equally relevant as it was before the needs. So before we had 48% value and now the perception is 91% value, which one is going to, which one is going to be easier for the, for the client to purchase? Clearly, once we've applied the value slider. So that's how you make a product or a service fly off the shelves. Um, I'm going to skip through these. If you want to know how to get the time for marketing, I can tell you that during the Q&A. If you sure. want to know what's coming in every week, I can tell you that during the Q&A. Um, yeah. Oh, this, this case study was, was Christina. Now, Christina was a professional trainer of uh, commercial photographers, showed, showed photographers how to get more work. And uh, she, she, what, what we did when, we, when I worked with her is we took her out from doing three-day workshops and one-on-one -on -one client work, and we scaled the value delivery. We made it simpler, easier. Everything I've just shown you, that's what we did with hers. And created lead generation webinars, a front end service in the form of an online training course, 80% automated and a back end service in the form of a mastermind group, a pretty common model, but not one that a lot of people actually, uh, you know, like Christina would have, would have known about it adopted. I email from her quite a long email. Actually, I've just extracted. Now she was earning six figures before, but she was working actually more than six days a week to generate it. She said, I'm now having more fun generating 500% more revenue and helping more people in less time than I ever thought possible. And the email went on to say, I'm just about to go on a three month well, round the world trip. And I could never have done that prior to resolve which is nice. So I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm, I'm not telling you this, this case study because I want you to be impressed with, with me or what I do. I just want you to be impressed on the fact that it is doable, that if you can apply what I've been sharing with you, then the results can be quite transformational. Um, boom, 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 boom. Let's go to Q and A. Is any questions, comments, observations? Quick jokes, fact, fiction, or fantasy? <laughs> James has a question from way back by the key to the door. Is the key a lead, or is the key something you need to discover? It's a lead generation system. 
It's everything we've been talking about. Yeah. So once an inquiry comes in, that's when conversion becomes relevant. And once the client buys, that's when your service becomes very relevant. You've got to knock the socks off it. But if you don't have an inquiry, sales conversion is no good because you've got nothing to convert. And it doesn't matter how good you are, or what you do, you've got no client to serve. So the door is never unlocked until you've got lead generation systems in place. And, 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 you know, I used to think I had a lead generation problem. And then someone kindly told me that I actually had a lead generation system problem. So how long does it take to set up a lead generation system for someone if they have nothing, like they're just a word of mouth, a networking person? Okay, so a semi-automated system can be set up in eight weeks. Not, not less. Okay. But hey, I mean, eight weeks, Jesus, that goes pretty fast, right? But that, that's the first system. So what we do with, with clients is we segment what they set up. So we start with something that's simple effective that can be set up and it's going to capture the needs of the wanderers the diamond the diamond is just you know two yards in, into the forest um and by the way wanderers will not go 200 yards into the forest to to find out what's shining they'll only go two yards mm -hmm. uh-huh <laughs> um so yeah you look you can if someone's got the magic then you can set up a lead generation system, which will be semi-automated in eight weeks. And that's, that's what we show people how to do is, is within eight weeks, they've developed the asset they need and they've launched that asset and they're getting new clients in within 30 days after that. One thing I've also discovered, it's your lead generation system is not a build it and then set it and forget it. It's, it's a living, breathing animal, basically. Yeah, You've got to always be watching it and nurturing it and updating it. Yeah. Once you, once you understand the, the principles behind, you know, effective honeypot for a wanderer versus an effective honeypot for an explorer versus an effective honeypot for a seeker, when you have to understand those principles, then you can change your, your, those, uh, those, those mediums, if you like, or those assets. Um, and still get it right because you understand why they actually work <laughs> as opposed to kind of random acts of marketing. Right. Yeah. You need to measure. Definitely. Yeah. James wants to know, do you use a CRM or what base tools do you recommend? Well, I look, uh, Ted, I'm like you, I think I use Infusionsoft. Yep. But I don't start people on Infusionsoft. You know, we start them to, and James, it depends too. If, if you, if, if you're talking about seekers and the premium price, and they're going to be paying you 50,000. Um, then something like, uh, what were we using for them? Contactually. I uh, yeah. was pretty good. Um, but if you're going to be going after a lot of wanderers, you want to build your list and you want to be doing webinars and social media as, as kind of like a platform, then I would start with something simple like MailChimp. I mean, MailChimp gives you 2000 subscribers for absolutely no cost whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, so MailChimp.com would be a good email campaign platform to uh, invest in. I say invest, sign up for it. Um, but as I said, if you're wanting something high end, uh, I, what do you use something, Ted, for, for high end stuff? No, I use Infusionsoft for everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's it is it is the Rolls Royce. You know, it's the gold standard. It just takes a lot to set up. So yeah. Um, I like you know I want to get. So, so with, with my work, what we want to do is we want to do is the, the, the basic strategic stuff, like getting the message right, figuring out what the magic is and get that done pretty quickly. So we can get our first, what I call our foundation marketing asset, our honeypot done and out there into the marketplace in front of the right people. So we're generating some leads. So it's kind of like a fast pass start strategy. But then once we've got the leads coming in, we also want to be building the other lead generation systems so that we've got in the medium or long term we've got more and more systems and more and more powerful systems david says infusion soft hurts <laughs> yeah well we have this idea of confusion soft yeah but but i you know we 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 just we started we actually started with eye contact which is like mailchimp yeah. and we you know we built six thousand high quality engaged subscribers and then we switched to Infusionsoft when we got, 
because we had the revenue then and we had the, the, the funds coming in, we could afford to hire a contractor to set Infusionsoft up for us. Yeah, you don't need to start out with the Rolls Royce. You start out small, get it working, and then migrate to bigger platforms as you need them. That is the way. That is the segue. Yeah. Okay. Chad, if you're okay, I'll just share quickly about my program in case, because on the one hand, I don't want this to be some sort of sales ambush. On the other hand, I've shared a lot of information. I don't want to leave people high and dry thinking, well, how do I actually implement this correctly? Yeah, you almost open the door with that key and then you're going to leave. <laughs> yeah, that's like, there we go. Um, so, and th this may or may not be right for you, but let me share with you folks. If you want to put into place a system for lead gen and have that marketing stool and get your message right and all the other stuff we've been talking about, um, then probably this would be a good option for you, the Leadsology program. It's, so we develop every part of that 10 part leadsology model we looked at. We make sure that you create a uniqueness so that your book cover is in full color amongst all the black and white ones on the shelf. We re-engineer how you deliver the value, like we did for Christina, so you can help more people earn a lot more money and have a lot more free time. And you finish it knowing exactly what you need to do, when you need to do it in order to generate fresh, high quality inbound leads on demand. and we have the competence to do it. Uh, a big one, which I didn't mention before, is this uh, show you how to scale your marketing through OPN and EMAs. You know about educational marketing assets. OPN is other people's networks. So I show you how to build a relationship of know, like, and trust with others who have your ideal clients in their network and how to effectively get your marketing message through that medium on a semi-automated basis so that you actually create an inexhaustible flow of leads because it's great having you know ha having your honey pots outside a forest but once the bears are satisfied you need to find another forest <laughs> mm -hmm. you need more audiences and that's where other people's networks come in i mean that that one there is worth that is opn has generated millions of dollars for myself and my clients and if you can get into that for 197 a month that's a pretty good value okay so how does it all work? There are 16 online training modules delivered over eight weeks. You complete a part of, I give you the Leadsology Planner, and you complete a part of that each week. It's proprietary, a, a simple proprietary software that, we, that I develop. There's a live Q&A. You rock up and ask me your questions, and other people listen, and I can answer your questions directly. There's an online discussion panel, which is 24-7, so you can post your, your results to that panel, and I can critique them. Uh, it is... One of the, I mean, apart from the fact that people say it's genuine, it's the real deal, it's authentic, uh, it's, you know, it's real. The other comment we get a lot is that it's so step by step simple. It's, I don't give you, here's 64 things, go choose from a couple of them. It's, it, do this one thing. This is how I break down that one thing into a series of five steps. Here's an example of someone else has done it before you. Here's three samples of people that have actually completed it. Well, now you go ahead and do those five steps and then let you and I meet and make sure that they're done right. So hold your hand step by step simple. So you finish with a complete customized lead generation module, actually bringing in new clients. I have two guarantees around this. I have a guarantee of satisfaction. If you're not completely satisfied having fully engaged with the Leadsology program over the first four weeks, just notify, just let me know before the start of the fifth week, I'll give you all your money back does mean you have to actually do the darn program. You know, you have to complete the modules, the action assignments. Basically just, yeah, you've got to engage in the program. Uh, rock up to the weekly Q&As. So if you do the program, half the program, and you don't think this is one of the very best business decisions you have ever made, then it's an instant money back guarantee. That's guarantee of your satisfaction. I also have a results guarantee. So I have uh, two, what we call fast start strategies. And I'll guarantee that it'll generate at least what you invest in the program, uh, which you can, you know, you can invest 2000 up front or 197 a month over, over 12 months within 30 days of graduation. So we talked before about how long it take to get the stuff working eight weeks for the program with another month or 30 days after that, you'll have new leads. If it doesn't happen, let me know. And I will personally get on a call with you one on one and we'll get you back on track and super successful. Uh, I do have a bonus, uh, which is a two-day masterclass. I run these twice a year in beautiful Mooloolaba. You can attend live or we can live stream you in if you don't want to fly, but you should fly to Australia because we need your British and American uh, currency over here. So you should fly here. I mean, 
seriously though, I've flown to San Diego for a one day masterclass and it was worth every, every minute of every flight. So you get to collaborate with other people who graduated from the program. We create networking and, and JB campaigns. You have more in depth lead generation training. This is easily valued at $2,000 for the two days masterclass. You enroll the day, you get that free. Uh, or if you book a time to chat with me, you can also pick that up. And the other bonus for anyone enrolling prior to Sunday midnight is you get lifetime membership of Leeds Elegy. So you can repeat the program at any time. So that's valued at least another $2,000. Um, but you got to join before Sunday midnight. Now, how do you invest? Okay, you can, okay, if you pay up front, 1997 US, I'll give you the link in a moment. <clears throat> you, you, you get also a bonus one-on-one -on -one with me, which is 45 minutes valued at a further 750. Um, it's a pretty good deal. Like this is genuinely valued at more than $6,000. It's not one of these fake stack up the bonuses thing. You can see the value is there and you can actually cash flow the program as well. Um, there's actually options for six times 379. And I think we've also left here, yeah, we have left the option up for 12 times 197. So what you do to enroll is you go to www.getleadsology.com. You'll see there are shopping cart links there. Select your payment option. You get immediate access to the program. Uh, you need to set aside four to eight hours a week to actually complete the program. And uh, if you want to take advantage of the bonus offers, you can join now and start later. That's not a problem. Now, if you're not sure, then go to bookachatwithtom.com. That's www.bookachatwithtom.com. And we'll see if you've got a fit between what I offer and what your needs are. And this is for, this is for the explorers. You know, this is for the, the seekers. You just go straight, we'll sign up for the program. You got a double, double guarantee on the program. You can go there straight away and sign up. But if you're not sure, and you just want to ask me a couple of questions, it's not a coaching call. I'm not going to give you a whole lot more ideas. It's just simply to sit down two adults together and go, okay, is this a good idea for you? Or is it, and if it's not, I'll be honest with you and I'll probably be able to refer you to something or someone else that might be better to the people you're at right now. So that is it. Uh, I have to take any more questions, but there are, they are the two URLs. This is one of the most complete systems I've seen. It looks like Thank everything. Thank you. But we still have to do the work, right? Yeah. And you know, I was going to mention that again. I had a graphic artist, who um, did the cup of coffee thing, and she actually lives locally, which is very rare. My clients are scattered all around the world. But she like, lives like five minutes away. And so we had a cup of coffee, and she, and I, you know, she asked about leaseology, and I explained, and, what, and she said, she looked at me and said, wow, that seems like a lot of work. <laughs> and, I, and I said, well, okay, how long have you been doing graphics for? And she said, 17 years. Okay, and you know, how's the marketing been going? She said, not too good, you know. And I said, well, think of it like this. It's like for 17 years, you've been living in a tent. And you can survive in a tent. It gets pretty drafty in winter and cold and may not be so hygienic after a couple of years. A bit hot in the summer and not much of a lifestyle in a tent. And I'm offering to build a house with you, your house. And you're looking at me and going, oh, sounds like a lot of work. So, well, we've got a special deal on it. It's going to be a high quality house and you get to enjoy that house for decades to come. But I got to get you out of your tent. Yeah. So she enrolled in the program and it's I'll tell you another quick story, Ted, which people might find interesting in my youth. And we are talking over 30 years ago when triathlons made their debut, I got into triathlons, you know, swim for 1.5 K cycle for 40 K and then do a 10 K run. Seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> Anyhow, I did, my swimming was awful. I couldn't swim 25 yards without drowning. So I got into a swim squad and it happened to be the swim squad uh, where the world champion was swimming. And this, now we were in different lanes, right? You have a fast lane, the medium lane, and the slow lane. I was in the slow lane for the coaching and he was in the fast lane. But his name was Rick Wells and he had just won the world championship in Perth, Australia. And we were swimming in the same pool. As I said, not in the same lane. I didn't know him, he didn't know me. But one day after swim training, we were walking out through the car park and then we, you know, we were heading to the same direction. So our lines intersected and then we ended up walking next to each other. I introduced myself. I said, 
Hey, Rick, I'm Tom, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Congrats on the world champs. And he says, thanks very much. I said, you know, I'm interested. I'm training like 12 hours a week and I'm nearly killing myself. And for those of you who haven't done triathlons, 12 hours a week may not sound a lot. But you got a full-time job. It's quite a lot. And I said, I'm 12 hours a week. I'm nearly killing myself. I said, how many, how many hours a week are you training? And he thought for a moment. He looked at me and said, uh, about 30 hours. And instinctively, I said, 30 hours? Holy crap, that's a lot of training. That's a lot of hard work. And he <laughs> had a twinkle in his eye. He looked at me and he said, that's eh, not so bad if you're winning. <laughs> and ain't that the case, you know? Yeah, it's hard work. But if you're winning, it's so motivating and it's so satisfying. So, yeah, Lizology, you're going to have a bit of hard work. But it's okay if you're winning. Yeah. You know, before I set up my system, I had a good little business going. I went to BNI, Business Networking International, local networking events, Chamber of Commerce. I had a meetup group. And I had a great internet marketing business doing setting up websites and advertising for small business owners. But in 2008, when the economy collapsed, I had nothing. Dang. Because I wasn't using a system. I was just going to these meetings every week, putting in my time and getting referrals. Mm. but I had no way to reach out to any further than my local town. Mm. So now that I built my LinkedIn system, I felt so confident that. And, and that, isn't that the key word system? Built yeah. The system built the system, built the system. And, and as you quite already said, you know, you know, to stop uh, refining it and changing it. But I, it's kind of like, I explain to the people like this, you know, when you sit in a jet plane and you're going to travel from one city to another or a country, then that jet plane taxis down the runway and there is enormous power and energy coming out of the jet engines while it gets off the runway and up to altitude. The thrust is incredible. And, and it, the aviation fuel build, it, it, it burns, is extraordinary. Just getting out to cruising altitude. But once you're at cruising altitude, you can back off the throttle a bit and you're just cruising. And marketing is like that. There's a lot of effort getting your business off the runway. But once you're up to cruising altitude, you look back and you think, yeah, that was worth it because I got a whole new destination ahead of me. And you don't have that anxiety anymore. No. Once, you, once, you, once you've took off, you don't. <laughs> I always have a little bit on that runway still. But once, no, you don't have the anxiety. And you, you're not having to burn as much time and fuel, so to speak. So Bridget has an Related question, is this more for businesses that have already started getting clients or and want to expand? Like somebody wants to go from six figures to seven figures, is it good for starting out business? Well, it's best for startups because you're not going to waste a lot of time and money doing the wrong stuff. But it works, it works for a... This is not if you've got a bricks and mortar thing you're selling, you know, if you're selling houses or you've got a restaurant or uh, you're selling, you know, really nice plastic bottles or something. This is if you've got a service or you have an advice you're marketing, including software, then this is for you, whether you have a startup or whether you have an established business. The only difference is with an established business, if you are doing some stuff, I'm going to ask you to wipe that off the whiteboard and start again in respect to your marketing. If you've got a startup, you've got nothing on the whiteboard anyway. Oh, and the other thing I'd say, the caveat is this, for those eight weeks, don't do anyone else's courses. Don't read anyone else's books. Don't do anyone else's programs because what's that's like, it's like you've got this great recipe you've just bought from me and you've got this other great recipe and you decide to combine them both. And that's not going to be a tasty meal. That's going to be something that's a bit of everything. So Leadsology works. There's a guarantee that it works. Just do that for the eight weeks, get it up and running, and then you can go and try some other recipes. I'm guilty as charged. I've tried to combine two or three systems I was learning at the same time. It doesn't okay. work. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the enemy of good strategy <laughs> is, the good, is the good idea. Yep. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's it. James says thanks a bunch. Great stuff. I love this. Love your system. Okay. Okay, how can we you guys get a hold of you here? Get leadsology.com or book a chat with Tom if you have questions. That's the best way.
Well, thanks, Tom. This has really been well, awesome. Th thanks for the opportunity, Ted, and, and thank you to everyone who's participated because I, you know, I do want you to know that I do my best to honor the trust that you've placed in Ted and also in me. And uh, hopefully, whether we work together or not, then hopefully you've got some value and your life will be a little bit better for it. Thanks, everybody, for coming. If you have questions, reach out to Tom or reach out to me. You know how to find me. And we'll see you on the next webinar. Thanks a lot, Tom. Thanks, Dave. Cheers. For more free training, visit socialsellingminute.com.